Hi, it's John Byrne with Poets and Quants. We are here for another Friday with Sandy. It's Sandy Kreisberg. He's in Boston, uh, founder of HBSGuru.com, and a premier, maybe the premier, uh, admissions consultant and tea leave reader at Harvard Business School. We have a, a really cool candidate uh, with an incredible story, Harley, who is in New York City, works for the Census Bureau, as a uh, regional Census Bureau manager, he's the guy who organizes all those field workers to go out and, and get those surveys completed. He wants an MBA, he's 33 years old, so he's a little bit outside the typical window. He's got a 3.3 GPA from Berkeley in media studies and a 321 GRE. That GRE is above the score of three of his schools on his target list, McCombs, Foster, and Duke. Uh, it's below uh, probably four schools, Haas, Columbia, Harvard, and Stanford. Uh, one of the kind of interesting things about Harley is that he went to community college um, and then entered uh, UC Berkeley from there. Uh, he had a rough uh, upbringing where he, he is a first generation college student. Um, but he was in three different high schools in California. He lived in his car, John. Cut to the chase. Okay. Harley, why don't you, why don't you step in here and say hi. That's part of the story, okay? <laughs> Harley, say hi so we can get you on the air. Soon. Yeah, totally. Hey, hey, hi. hi, everybody. Harley Simpson. What kind of car was it? Toyota 4Runner 2000. Her name was Smashley. It was a beautiful vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of room in a 4Runner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. You got to get that in there. That's uh, that says it all, man. Isn't that the first line in your essay? I I, I haven't written the essay yet. I, I wasn't unsure how to to what depth to put those kind of things in there. You know? Yeah, it's really important that you use that stuff, seriously, because that's that's a big part of your story. Look, here's you know, here's your story, really Harley. You 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 you're a totally likable guy. You've done some great stuff. There's some terrific volunteer work here with groups, you know groups coming out of incarceration, groups overcoming adversity. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, social enterprise kind of things that you've done. Uh, and then you've also had some technical jobs with professional sports leagues. A lot of these admissions committees are, uh, 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 I'm not going to say it, but they like sports a lot. <laughs> there's a, there's a, Two word term for that. Uh, the first word is jock, and the second word is has to do with your five senses. John, if you know what I'm thinking about here. I don't even want to go there. Okay. <laughs> so you got a lot going. Yeah, let's get back on the highway here. So you've got a lot of great volunteer stuff. You got this 3.3 GPA. Uh, you're not bringing a dowry to this marriage. You're kind of bringing a little baggage. So the question is, you know, how how good looking you how good looking are you so they can overcome your baggage? Uh, and uh, you got a lot going for you. Uh, how how, do, how would you explain the three three? Yeah, the three three uh, that was just at Berkeley. And outside of one semester, it was a 3.6. Um, that is critically important. Yeah, that you should need to let people under, know that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. let me say. It was one bad semester, and you had, I think you have good reasons why. You were bouncing around from, uh, in terms of location and all that. Yeah, you got to explain that. Your, your, your resume is a little um, uh, annoying, quite frankly. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying. No, it's annoying because it's hard to figure out what what you're actually doing, when, and um, what what the job entailed. I'm not going to go through that here, but just you know, I'll tell you later if you don't understand it. Okay. Uh, it, it uh, so you, you should put that uh, on, on your resume in some kind of, or on your application in some real bright line fashion. Uh, John, uh, I, did I ask you this? What do you think of the United States working for the US Department of Commerce as a, as a, as a job? A regional survey manager. 
Uh, look, I, I think schools are going to perceive it to not be a highly selective job. So they're not yeah. going to give you points for it. Um, I, I think the most powerful part of your application is your personal story. Mm -hmm. I mean, you overcame a lot of adversity. Uh, it clearly was a struggle for you. You're a first gen student. Um, you need to capture that and you need to capture your triumph over it. Having, having gotten into Berkeley, uh, having done uh, led a program to help other community college students get into UCs, uh, leading the program the, to help uh, inmates get their G, uh, GED, uh, your founding of uh, pandemicprofessors.org, which, which is a nonprofit devoted to matching tutors with uh, students in low income areas, which you only started in April. But if you look at the website, it's very slick very cool. It's a great idea. And scaling that may be your way to scale your GRE and your and offset your uh, low GPA. Yeah, what do you make of the 33 years old, John? Yeah, 33. That's the other thing. 33 years old. Um, you this know, is real important. Because what, 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 this is real important for older students. What are your, you're going to be, man, 36 when you graduate, right? <laughs> it's, it's pretty old, but you know, maybe I'll be able to cover hip replacements. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sandy and I wish we were your age. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, but like, what, what are you going to say? Suppose you're being interviewed and they say, what, what job do you want when you graduate? Oh, uh, well, I want to, I want to found a conglomerate of social enterprises and nonprofits to eradicate poverty. Like that's, I when you graduate, know. John, what kind of answer is it? Uh, that sounds um, like a real reach. Um, we need a real job. That, that sounds like what you want to do. That's what you want written on your tombstone, man. Yeah, that's, it's like, a, I would say it's more of a, that's a long-term goal. Now, the yeah. more immediate goal may be. You, you've got to be able to tell these people what job you want, what, what job well, yeah. you're going to be looking for. I mean, what are you going to be doing your... Yeah. If I if I can't figure out how to launch that wall in business school because it is a huge endeavor that I want to launch, uh, I already thought about you know I want to uh, lead operations at an early stage social social enterprise so I can get that experience. That that's good. What, like, yeah, that's a better answer. And People can get that. Don't in tell them. Okay. Do not say you want to figure out how to do this. If they say, well, how are you going to do this? And you say, well, I'm going to business school to figure out how to do it. They don't like that answer. They don't. <laughs> no, so the, the, the right school, answer. <laughs> yeah, the business school is more for refinement, connections, um, and you know, it gives you general uh, business skills. That's important. Don't, don't yeah, general you know, business I know how skills. I want to approach this already. It's a very long, drawn out thing. Very hard to express in even an essay. But um, you know, I, I know what I'm looking for with the business school. Well, I believe you. But for, in terms of applying, they, they do, you, you got to be able to, you know, get it into an, adver an advertisement for yourself, if you know what I mean. All right. You know, punchy. But don't you agree, Sandy, the strongest part of his application is his personal story? Oh, totally. It's a great personal story. You're a great guy. You've done a lot of terrific things. You've, you, you lived in your car. Uh, you're an up from poverty success story. You're working with ex-offenders uh, uh, and offenders from the looks of it. Uh, uh, well, apparently, uh, uh, I'm sorry if that was, or, or, or people currently in prison. Uh, and um, yeah, that's, that's a great story. They, they just want to make sure that you're, the first concern of a business school is that you're not going to be some unemployed person after you graduate. Ah, uh, it'll never happen. Always work. Oh, you know, even if I got to work at Costco, I'm always working. <laughs> um, they wouldn't Plus, free samples. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love those, man. <laughs> so, what do you? Okay, I know Harvard and Stanford are not in the picture. Yeah, I would say so. Right. Don't even waste your time. I think it's better to work on the places that are more likely to accept you and maybe even accept you with a scholarship. Okay. 
I mean, you never we, thought we, of like a EMBA thing, did you? That's, that doesn't work for you. Well, yeah. the, I think the EMBA is it takes a lot of work experience, and yeah. mine is uh, just you, you could you could make up that part of it. It's just that you'd have to what they want you people with EMBAs they often go back to their current job, so it's like a. Yeah, that was my issue with the, uh, the part-time programs uh, yeah. like at NYU because yeah. I'm right here. I would, could be able to keep my job, but they it's diminished career resources, and they even say, you know, we expect you to return to your job to advance. Yeah, exactly. exactly. In government, it doesn't really matter. It's time and grade. See, you, your age is less of an issue at a place like McCombs or Foster and possibly Duke. You know, those, those schools have a broader feeling about it. You know, Harvard, Stanford, they like them really young and they want to shape you because they don't want you coming in with, you know, that are already shaped. <laughs> um, so what, what do you think about Columbia, Sandy? That's going to be a hard one too, right? Yeah, Columbia, they're, they're heartless. They, no matter <laughs> well, maybe they need a little heart. Maybe Harley would give them a heart. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. But when push comes to shove, Columbia is very concerned about stats. Don't you think, John? Yeah, they are. The, the, your only shot at Columbia is if you wanted to do the January start uh, yeah, accelerated time. program, where the acceptance rate is very high, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little known secret. But I think you, need an, you want and need an internship. So I don't think you want to go into that kind of program, frankly. What you think? I don't know. I don't know about that. He doesn't need an internship, John. You you raise a good point. Let's yeah. say he goes into Columbia January start, and then, poof, you know he's got a MBA uh, yeah, eighteen Columbia. months later from That's Columbia. Would, would that help you out, Harley? Yeah, definitely. And I, when I went to Columbia, they they told me about that um, program, and they said it's for the people who want to do these kind of things. Yeah, so, them. yeah, so I'm glad you brought it up, John. I think that's, a, that's an excellent choice. I think that that is your shot into Columbia because I can't remember off the top of my head what the accept rate is, but it's like... It's in the 40s, I believe. Yeah, high wow. 40s. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, that's a shot. And incidentally, you're on like a lot of Columbia MBA, so they actually might go for it. And because they don't report GRE scores... They're not even going to be that concerned that, uh, you know, for, for a Harvard, Stanford, Columbia kind of thing, you might be a little bit below their class average, whatever that is, because they don't report it. So then they just have to swallow the 3-3, three, three, which they'll do. because Yeah. They, may... they got enough students to hide it. <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> I think that's the an average, excellent choice. Okay? <laughs> and besides, they take – they take lower than that in the range. Okay, what about Haas? Now, he went undergrad to Berkeley. Do you think Haas might buy this story or not? You know, they, they, you know, you got the whole social thing going on there. They're small. Their numbers are 725 and 37, 725 GMAT, 37 GPA. That's a hard one for, for Haas. Yeah, I, I think Haas, Haas is going to be hard. And so your, your reach is going to be Columbia January start and then McCombs, Foster and Duke. What do you think there, Sandy? Yeah, I'm going to pass that. I, I'm no expert at those places, John. Uh, I, th I, th I think you have I a think, good I think, I think, I think you've got a lot going for you. I think those schools would recognize just what a great piece of you know, human capital you are. Yeah. What is your thoughts on the, uh, the Cal Advantage program? Uh, if you don't know about that, Berkeley has the program only for alumni right now. They can apply without oh. test scores, one essay. So that's due June 30th. I'm, I'm doing that right now, and I actually have a test score. Um, so I don't know if that's going to give me a, a boost for this. What's the, pro what's the program you get into? The full-time MBA. Uh, I'm not familiar with it. W why are they doing that? Uh, concern over doom. They were trying to fill their 40%. Huh? What's that, John? You know that uh, Harvard's incoming class will be like 230 people short. Yeah. Because of people taking deferments. So, you know, yield. Oh, so that's a COVID thing. Yeah, yield is crazy at all the schools. And so they're, they're needing to fill in. Um, so that could be a unique opportunity for you. Definitely. Oh, so that just started in response to the virus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, no, that, that's that a good time. Go for it. I, I, I think. Okay, Sandy. I think I know you're going to agree with this. I think that Harley could benefit, and I rarely say this, from some guidance with an admissions consultant, because uh, I, I think crafting his story in a compelling way is absolutely crucial here. So it's well, beyond yeah. test scores, beyond GPAs. That is I, so okay. Yeah, I, I, I put it this way. I think I think. Harley, it's real important for you to craft your story in a powerful, clear uh, uh, way and impactful way, whether that requires, you know, meeting a friend who could do that or hiring someone or whatever, or working with someone or showing you your stuff to friends and getting feedback. Yeah, I agree with that. That's All what right. you got to do. And I'll, I'll even say this, okay, there are some admission consultants who do pro bono work believe it or not. And your story is so compelling. I think you could find a good admissions consultant who'd be willing to take you on. I mean, they probably won't invest a whole lot of time, but they'll certainly read your essays, hear your story and give you some advice. And I think you would really benefit from it because you got to leverage that personal story and you got to leverage it hard. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, how confident are you, are you that you can do it? I mean, we're making it out like you're a basket case. You no, you're not be, a basket case. <laughs> yeah, do you think it's going to be hard or not? Uh, crafting the story? Yeah. And, you know, because I've already begun trying to do it, I do find it somewhat difficult um, to figure out. I know what I want to do. I know how this falls in, into, how my life falls into what I want to do. Um, I haven't locked down exactly how to say that. Um, yeah. you know, I think you could benefit from it. I, I do. And um, I think it's worthwhile to just, you know, get, get a good read. Right. Right. Yeah. That's good advice. Anyway, I think you're going to have a good outcome. You're, you're all. Yeah. Look, your GRE is within range of those schools we mentioned. Uh, your GPA is, it is from a, a public Ivy Berkeley. Okay. Well, also long ago. That's the real yeah. thing. Well, and then, and then the fact that your first gen, you got the story also to get your job. I believe you had to have 15 semester credits in statistics and mathematics. Is that right? Yeah, you know your stuff. Okay, there you go. So, so there's some quant on your transcript, which is a good thing. You know? All right. There you okay, go. Here's a, here, answer this question, Harley. My 3.3 GPA is not a valuable predictor of my performance at your business school because... Because outside of one semester at uh, Public Ivy, I had a 3.6. Yeah, okay, that's a good lead sentence, and then you expand on that. You really got to get that yeah. straight. It's real important. Okay, we're getting... All uh, right, you're, you're going to get in. Get help with your essay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Whatever you do, even if it's from a friend or whatever, okay? All right. Adios. Harley, good luck to you, okay? We're All rooting right. for you. Thanks so much, yeah. guys. Really appreciate it. All right, Sandy, thank you once again. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quads. Thanks for watching.